Hello. <laughs> uh, hello to everybody and uh, I hope you are well and things are okay. And uh, <laughs> today our internet connection is showing nature of impermanence. So that's <laughs> oh yeah so yeah uh, there isn't that much uh, uh, I can report about me I'm here in front of you I'm well and uh, things are all right so that is really more or less uh, in terms of the relation to the current situation with uh, this virus coronavirus and the uh, Indian government is slowly, uh, you know, the, uh, sort of easing the restriction. And uh, that's what they say slowly. It's already released by individual people, <laughs> but <laughs> according to the government rules, slowly releasing the, uh, easing the, you know, the rule restriction, giving some, you know, some those small shops can be open. Uh, giving order that and uh, so we we are waiting we are waiting uh, on 3rd of May uh, the Modi will Prime Minister Modi will give some kind of, of announcement so we are just waiting for that otherwise yeah everything is just all right <laughs> okay better to read uh, the text uh, instead of too much blah blah hmm? okay so the, as uh, just remind ourselves we are reading this amazing text by you know the great teacher Jason Kappa mainly focus on lay practitioner as a advice words of advice for the lay practitioner and uh, you know the uh, our reading today we will start from uh, verse 6 we uh, finish up to verse uh, 5 and the uh, first two verses are praising to the uh, goddess Tara then the next verse verse 3 is briefly explaining you know the, what kind of potential that we have as a human beings internally and externally something that great things can that we can do and we have this great potential uh, technically called precious human rebirth and then the uh, uh, two verses that we read you know the uh, one verse we read last uh, last uh, two days ago and uh, the other verse uh, prior to that those two verses are uh, very much you know uh, explaining this you know precious human rebirth uh, will not last forever and that is a relation connection to the nature of impermanence can you hear the noise so that is the the, the, the those birds which I was talking about and they sit in those one of those coconut trees and somehow today I noticed two pairs you know uh, having gone to the, uh, seek their food I don't know why uh, usually they go during the day around six they fly they have a big wind they fly and they make just before they're flying they make big noise then they all go together about uh, six pairs they all are in a pairs and today two pairs somehow whatever the reason so they make this strange noise so just ignore that mm. it is not my noise <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's you know the nature of impermanence and that is explained relation to this human body human life which has tremendous potential uh, you know if we want to do something not just useful to ourselves not just useful to 
right here and now, you know, something useful, meaningful to ourselves and also meaningful, helpful to many living beings, not only at this time, but also for many, many generations to come, or from the Buddhist point of view, many, many lives to come. And, uh, you know, that, uh, that precious human life is explained, uh, explained with the nature of impermanence, and that means, you know, the death is definite, when the time, uh, time of the death is indefinite, and those are the explained. And also yesterday briefly touched the last line, you know, saying that, you know, those our actions, action, actions, or activities of our body, speech and mind, either they are constructive or uh, destructive. You know, they all have results or consequences, and those results or consequences will not going to completely, you know, vanish or completely, you know, uh, sort of, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, van not going to vanish, not going to lose. You know, we will experience one way of another, one time of another, you know, we will experience those consequences and the, the consequences, like, uh, you know, will follow like the shadow of our, our body when we go, shadows follow all the time. And in other words, all the virtues or non-virtues actions individually and collectively that we create or commit, they all have consequences. And these consequences results in a one way or another we have to experience and uh, never going to be uh, vanished in a thin air. So that is the, uh, you know, uh, more or less summary of so far where we uh, our readings. So today's reading is verse 6 and this is to do with as uh, I briefly mentioned the other day you know the text is written uh, by a great Buddhist teachers and you know at his time in Tibet 19 you know the 1914 uh, 14 you know, uh, 14th uh, uh, century, you know, the majority of Tibetans, I think 99.9% are Buddhists. And so his audience is, I, th I think, mainly focusing on those lay uh, Tibetan Buddhists. And that's something also good to remind ourselves. So uh, I mentioned the other day, some of the points are not necessarily relevant or not necessarily you know, uh, uh, agreed by the people who are non-Buddhist, but then that's how it is. So, that, uh, and this, this verse, this verse uh, that we are going to read today, uh, it has a continuation of the previous verse that is in relation to those, our actions and their consequences, and then that, that is really continued that, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that subject. So in a, uh, in a quotation mark, from bad will come the long and the unbearable pain of the three realms. From good, higher, happier realms, from which to swiftly enter, uh, enter the uh, echelon, echelons of enlightenment, and that, that's within those lines are within that quotation mark. Uh, notice and think upon it day after day. So that is really talking about those uh, ac uh, uh, consequences of those actions, our actions, our activities of the body, speech and mind, consequences, you know, the, the, those constructive actions, you know, will bring forward or will you know, uh, bring the result of uh, what you call the uh, enjoyable, you know, the joyful, happy, fulfilling. And those destructive actions, actions you know, will bring you know, the, what you call the you know, unpleasant, painful, unbearable, uh, and so forth. 
but these are not that kind of you know, cause and effect. Pleasant, constructive actions brings you know, the uh, positive, con uh, pleasant, happy, uh, happiness, joyfulness. And uh, on the other side, you know, this is not created by the Buddha or Buddhas. Uh, and this is the, the, this other you know, natural law. You know, the natural law. Although we try to, now, nowadays, we try to play with the natural law, like a genetic, genetically modifying things, cloning sentient beings, and they're doing so many things. Those are the you know, exceptional cases. The natural law, you know, is the, you know, how things and events are evolved naturally, uh, naturally in the sense, you know, not uh, deliberately interfering by agents, by humans or whoever. So that is how, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the ancient Indian spiritual traditions strongly respect that kind of natural law. It is not just Buddhism, it is not just Buddha or subsequently Buddhist teachers talk about you know, how important to understand that first of all our actions have consequences and the consequences are consequences follows according to the actions. If the actions are constructive, you know, uh, virtues, wholesome, consequences are also according to those actions. And if actions are unwholesome, unhealthy, destructive, then, you know, the, the, the consequences of those actions are also according to, you know, those uh, uh, unhealthy actions. And that is very important, like, a, you know, the philosophy uh, to be understood by the, uh, by the human beings, you know. The, and uh, as I said, it is not just Buddhist concept, like, for example, you know, quite almost same time, you know, started uh, as a Buddhism, Jainism, you know, still have a very big followers in India, and you know, have a very, very strict sort of, you know, the, uh, what you call the, how to behave, you know, even when they walk outside, not due to the coronavirus, you know, they put the, what you call the mask for a long time ago, you know. So that is really something important in here, important. And this will, this understanding, this understanding of this natural law will help us in how to behave ourselves within the society, individually and collectively. As I mentioned the, the other day, although we don't have any, I don't have any clear evidence or any kind of, you know, the, to show scientific evidence, you know, the many people, many uh, those people who know this, you know, this this area of medicines and, uh, you know, virologies and so viral, uh, uh, viruses, you know, they point finger to saying that in China, they said that there are many uh, places called wet markets selling all sorts of things. You know, the what's called the raw meat with the live animal, wild animal, vegetable, everything seems to be in a market, in a almost like on a in a same table. I don't know exactly how they arranged. Of course they all have consequences. These are the actions and they will have consequences. You know, so th those are the things. And the, in other words, how, you know, the teaching on this topic, you know, the 
in Sanskrit called karma, law of cause and effect, teaching on this and understanding it. And here Jesongkhapa said, you know, know this and think upon it day after day. It is not just, you know, to cause fear or panic or scaremongering. And that's not the point. The point is, you know, to, to explain these facts, these kind of law of cause and effect, then to, you know, to bring within ourselves, within ourselves to bring, you know, the constructive way of living. You know, in other words, ethical living. Ethical living. Which we will, uh, we will look at in the next, uh, also in the next uh, two uh, next verses. You know, the, the main purpose, the main purpose, the main reason why Buddha and subsequently Buddhist teachers and also non, those non-Buddhist great teachers talk about this law of cause and effect, karma, is really to have a constructive way of living. Whether there is a CCTV or not, you know, because these days, you know, we try to put CCTV everywhere. That, that is not a good way to make, to live ourselves in a more constructive way. We need to put CCTV in here with un this kind of understanding, understanding of law of cause and effect, karma. And I remember uh, the, I said this several times, and uh, that, that's part of my culture shock, and I still remember very clearly even the person's name. In the early time when I was in UK, I think that might be 1997, six or seven, you know, as you know, the, the, the English, they are crazy with their national football team when it's come to, you know, within the competition within the Europe, Europe you know, uh, uh, within the uh, European countries or World Football Club, you know, competition, they are completely crazy. And that time there was a poor uh, manager of English football team who was called Glenn something a tall guy, seems a very innocent guy. And uh, so he misspoke, he talked about karma. So next day he was completely ridiculed by all the newspapers. And uh, I think after a few, a few months he has to leave, just talking about using that term, karma. So I was shocked that time. <laughs> So, you know, the, the, of, of course, there's a, you know, sometimes cult culturally you can, you know, ridicule, you can say some strange things. That's understandable. But uh, not knowing actual proper implication of that kind of concept, theory or the philosophy, purely and very thoughtfully for hundreds of years constructed, to have a moral, ethical way of living. You know, that is something which, of course, different, different spiritual traditions have a different way to explain different philosophy, to give, you know, to, to guide their followers to have a very constructive way of living, you know, have a very ethical way of living have a very, you know, the virtuous way of living. And that is the main reason, you know, this, uh, why it is saying, you know, the, uh, to understand your constructive, you know, your constructive actions will bring, uh, you know, desirable, enjoyable, happier results. And your destructive, unhealthy, actions will bring undesirable, destructive, 
uh, unpleasant, painful consequences. And, you know, those consequences will not going to lose somewhere in the middle, you know, between you create it and when the consequences to come, you know. And uh, because it is natural law, natural law. In, a, in the natural law, unless there's a, some interruptions, otherwise, you know, bit by bit by bit, result will come. You know, result will bring there when the conditions are met. And it is exactly the same. Only difference is we're talking about karma, more relation to our, you know, living beings' actions actions which are willfully created, committed, and, uh, you know, the experience of those. Uh, and when we talk about external, like the, those coconut trees, those and those things, they also have similar, that kind of process. Only different is, you know, the, those, you know, growing, bringing fruit, doesn't have, you know, will you know, volitions, but the actions that we have, have those things. So that's the difference. So that is the mm, verse 6. So today we are going to move to verse 7 too. So we are going to do two uh, verses today. So then the next verse, verse 7, uh, go into more, you know, the specific, what can we do if that is the case? If my actions positive, you know, and uh, negative have those consequences, then how should I sort of model, how should I uh, structure my life as a lay person? You know, and this is what here it comes. Hmm? With such thoughts, make efforts in refuge. Uh, refuge, you know, uh, we will talk, hmm? refuge. Live as best you can in the five lifelong vows praised by Buddha as the basis of lay life. Take sometimes eight day-long vows and guard them dearly. And that is the, you know, what practically, what, you know, the, uh, the, the, what we can do as a lay person and this is really very much to do with the ethics, Shila. You know, Shila ethics. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, the second saying, uh, So think that earlier explanation of the law of cause and effect, their consequences, how they follow, you know, what, how, what kind of consequences, and thinking that again and again, then make an effort, make an effort as a Buddhist taking refuge in Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Taking refuge in Buddha in a very simple term as your teacher, your teacher, you know, mentor, guide you, teach you. Take refuge in Dharma as an actual something that you can do. In this case, taking the five precepts. Taking refuge in Sangha, in a very simple term, Sangha, not necessarily lay, and not necessarily ordained people, very, uh, very loose term. You know, people who live, people who try very hard to live their life according to the teachings of the Buddha. You know, take refuge in Sangha, in the sense, to learn from them to share your challenges, your difficulties in the spiritual path and learn from them, talk to them. These are the very simple term. Of course, we can talk, taking refuge in more, you know, the deeper, more, you know, detail. But here today, just I will put it in that way. You know, when it says, with such thoughts, make efforts in refuge, like a thinking the Buddha, the historical Buddha, as a once-on teacher. Although he passed away more than 
2,500 you know, years ago, still thinking as your teacher will make huge difference. And the teachings, not just the oral teachings, but also practical those teachings that we, you know, cultivating shila, cultivate um, ethics, cultivating concentration, cultivating wisdom, bringing them, making them, you know, real, you know, more what you call real and uh, uh, functioning within our within our lives, taking refuge in dharma, taking refuge in sangha, those people who live their life, or at least try very hard to live their lives according to the teachings of the Buddha, treating them as your friends, Sangha member, to learn. So with that kind of mind, then it says, you know, uh, take refuge. Live as best you can in the five long uh, lifelong vows. So then lay people can take a long, you know, full whole their life you know lift those five or you can take one two it is there are five but they you know people who like to want to take all five that's fine or people want to take one or two in the vinaya tradition if you decided to take three then only two is left then you must take all five that is the vinaya mm -hmm. rule anyway uh, monastic rule. Mm. So, what are those five? I'm sure you all know. No, to refrain taking living beings' life. Particularly here it refers to, you know, any kind of life. Particularly those, you know, human lives. Taking things or objects which are not given. Refrain taking objects or things which are not freely given, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, lying, refrain from lying, and uh, refrain from sexual misconduct, and refrain from intoxicants, using, you know, alcohol, drugs, part, apart from medicines. So those are the Five lay vows, refraining killing, refraining, you know, the, what's called the stealing, refraining uh, lying, refraining sexual misconduct, refraining, you know, intoxicants. With the thought, strong, clear thought of Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. And take that in front of a you know, the uh, uh, person who has, um, who has those vows, or like a fully ordained monks, which is very nice, which is either one, two, three. And that's what here it says. Praised by Buddha. It is, it seems, during the Buddha's time, during the Buddha's time, that is what very often Buddha, you know, uh, seems Buddha you know, did when he encounter the lay practitioner first day he, he gives he gave panjashila now panjashila is the five precepts and these days you know i notice theravadan tradition you know those monks when they you know uh, when uh, when they encounter lay community and they, some quite often before teaching dharma Usually they give first five panchashila. You know, that's quite a very nice tradition. Very nice tradition. And then uh, here the Tsongkhapa, the Tsongkhapa says, you know, the, praised by the Buddha as the basis of lay life. So to live life in, with those five vows, five precepts, with the strong thought of Buddha, Dharma and the Sangha. Hmm? Take sometimes the eight day long vows and guard them dearly. So, eight day long vows, this is, you know, that, that uh, almost exactly the same what are the eight, you know, in the, in the Vinaya, not Mahana tradition, you know, also have 
eight vows. Exactly the same. The people who take called the eight Mahana vows, you know, the eight are exactly the same. On top of those five, which you already have, we have mentioned, then the sixth, uh, the sixth one is uh, one. Uh, yeah, the, the sexual misconduct is slightly different. You know, the, the eighth one, eighth one. If you're going to take the eighth uh, precept, then it is not sexual misconduct to refrain. It is refrain. You should refrain sexual activity, and that's the difference with the uh, fourth one. Fourth one out of the, the five lay precepts, sexual misconduct, eight precepts, then the sexual activity. That's one difference. Then the you know the what you call the uh, the five, other five or six. Then not eating after the noon. You know the not eating after the noon, and not indulging. You know. Dancing, uh, singing, those play playful things, and also the eighth one is not indulging, like sort of, you know, the using, uh, like on ornaments, you know, the jewelries, just for the purpose of indulgement. You know, of course, you should wear your wedding rings, uh, engagement rings. Other day I noticed, and anyway, not not so that, yeah, yeah, it's already. So those are the eight. Those are the eight, and you know, in the Mahayana tradition, in the in the in the in the in the in the, uh, in the Vinaya tradition, those eight also should be taken from a person, and those uh, in, uh, mainly the you know those ordained people, from in front of ordained person, take those eight precepts. And it is not long lifetime, it is 24 hours. And it is for one's own liberation, one's own well-being. But when you take the eight minor precepts, then the motivation is different. And where to take is different. Where to take, you take in front of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. You don't need some a living person that you take the precepts. You can take with the imagine, uh, with the visualization of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and take the eight precepts with the motivation of two well beings of all living beings, all sentient beings. So that is the eight, what we call the eight Mahayana precepts. Uh, the motivation is different, way to take is different, and otherwise it's almost the same. Time, time is 24 hours. Others almost the same. Uh, there may be slightly different here and there. Others. So that's what here Jason Carver has, you know, said, uh, and guard them dearly. Well, once you have taken the precepts, then keep the precepts. If you take eight, 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 eight minor precepts, then during that twenty-four hours, physically, mentally, verbally, keep them pure. If you take lab lay vows for a long lifetime, you know, one, two, three, or all five, then try to live with those vows as pure as possible. And that's what Jason Kaba suggests, you know, to the lay practitioners. And this is what I mentioned, meaning of Shila. Shila or ethics is the foundation, is the foundation. Without foundation, without the Shila, other two trainings, technically called, other two practice, concentration and what you call the wisdom, is very, very difficult to grow, difficult to nurture, because there's no base, because there's no shila, no, no ethics. Although they all you know, support each other, but there is some kind of Structurally, there is some kind of which one is priority in the early stage and then move to. So those are the... Okay, now that is the Tsongkhapa's reading. And now I'm going to do the... Uh, that. Mm. So now we are reading this one. That is the, what you call the uh, uh, Tara. 
dolma, liberators. Liberator in this context, our reading, from eight fears, from eight fears. And all eight fears are very much our internal, you know, the thoughts and emotions, thoughts and emotions. And the first and second we already have done. The first is negative pride, and, you know, negative pride. And that is, you know, the, uh, more like emotion, also may have thoughts. And the second, which we read last time was, you know, the, what you call the ignorance, ignorance. So the first one is illustrated as a line. Second one is illustrated as a, uh, what you call the um, elephant. And, uh, you know, the, so the, that is how it is. So today's reading will be the third one. So me is a long deal, cool, Nature to drink, take bell, long deal now. Give a nozzle, sebe, new bachin, sepe, new bachin. Shedang me, but Japtus. So today, the, uh, the, 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 the fear that we would like to be free from is uh, what you call the Shedang. Um, what you call them? Um, not ang uh, anger or hmm. my words are going away now. <laughs> sh sh shall we just say first anger? It will come. And mm, 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 anyway, my term is not coming. So uh, shall we just say anger for the, for the, for the, for the time being? There's another one. Mm, 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 yeah, it's not coming. Uh, so, and uh, it is illustrated as a uh, fire, fire, you know, fire. Mm? So, uh, the scenario, scenario or, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the scenario is created in here. So, in other words, very, you know, the, what you call the uh, unsubdued or untrained, uh, untrained, you know, this uh, conceptual thoughts, conceptual minds, or conceptual minds which is very unhealthy, very unhealthy in the sense, constantly thinking all sorts of meaningless things. Tsushi maimba, tsushi maimba, ije. So this, that kind of thoughts. It is like, it is illustrated to me, ije lungi. You know, it is like the wind, strong wind, strong wind here. You know, the, uh, as a the, that our you know the uh, un untrained or un you know unhealthy conceptual thoughts. To me, and the, you know uh, that wind of that uh, untrained. Uh, you know the uh, conceptual thoughts. Uh, you know the sort of create a sphere of you know the like a uh, to nature. Our actions, actions which uh, activities, our behaviors, like the very uh, and a very uh, smoky very smoky, can't see any further, you know, any further, very smoky. Nechu. Nechu means, you know, the unhealthy actions, unhealthy behaviors. Mm. And these unhealthy behaviors are like the, you know, the, the very smoky, you know, for example, uh, uh, this early this year, when, when, they, when, they, when there were uh, big fires in Australia, you know, firefighters can't see any further than a few meters because of the wind, smoke, and all these can't see any further. So, like that kind of scenario. And, it, you know, in that fire, all including the buildings, including the, those long, you know, old trees are consumed by that fire in Australia, they yeah, are talking about. So here it says, third line, Gewen Naksal Sekpen Nubachen. You know, the 
uh, what you call the fueled by the wind of you know this untrained conceptual mind and act with these un non virtuous actions which are like in the middle of a smoke very big smoke smoky atmospheres and these will consume the entire virtues like the forest big forest of virtues is consumed by this fire which is like you know the uh, fire the shadang meiji so uh, the the anger hatred that's what i'm looking at earlier the hatred you know the and uh, the hatred like fire which consume this virtues in a jungle in an entire the jungle of the virtues in a sphere of smoky you know the, uh, the, the bad actions unhealthy actions which are you know driven by which are in you know, a fueled by the those conceptual thoughts conceptual minds so and that's what he is saying uh, may may i protect may i protect from that uh, you know the, uh, hatred like fire which consumes all the virtues and that's what he this uh, third uh, third uh, third uh, you know the uh, fear that we request uh, to be protected okay so that is today is my blah blah and uh, today we are, i have a big competition with my you know friends of those birds and i don't know who win me or those birds they are very noisy <laughs> oh yeah okay and uh, thank you a uh, little bit shorter but it, this is the right right duration which i like and uh, thank you thank you for listening and uh, keep well keep safe and keep well thank you